this video, I want to show you a book on probability and statistics. So this is a book you can use to learn some serious mathematics. Now, a lot of the stuff does require calculus, but you can learn some of it without calculus. And if you know calculus, then that makes it even cooler because you can use calculus for some of the stuff in this book. Probability and Statistics for Engineers and Scientists. This one is by Anthony J. Hayter. Let's take a look at this book. I believe this is from uh, like 1996. Copyright 1996, yep. And here are the contents of this book. So we have probability theory. It's really cool. Random variables. Discrete probability distributions. So these are things um, that you would learn if you uh, were to use this book for a course or something like that. Um, typically a course like this in college would be uh, taught with a prereq of calculus. So you would have to know calculus before taking a course like this in college. But for self-study purposes, you can just jump in. There are things that, again, you won't understand, but there are also things you will understand. Oh, this is cool. Inferences on a population mean, confidence intervals, and hypothesis testing. That's really cool. We should, we should take a look at that um, just to see what that's about. Discrete data analysis, the analysis of variance, simple linear regression and correlation. A lot of good mathematics here. Multiple linear regression and nonlinear regression. So all very, very good things. Uh, I have seen most of these things, not all of them. Multi-factor experimental design and analysis, non-parametric statistical analysis, there we go. Quality control methods, uh, reliability analysis, and life testing. And then we have some tables and answers to the odd numbered problems in the back of the book, which is super, super helpful uh, if you're doing any type of uh, self-study with this book. But um, really, really good topics, really excited about these. Let's go to Let's go to inferences on a population mean. Okay, that's in chapter eight, page 369. Let's take a look at that. Inferences on a population mean, page 369. So that is really useful. Um, if you take statistics in college or in high school, this is something you'll learn. However, uh, in this book, you're gonna do it uh, from a more rigorous perspective. So. Certainly a much uh, more rigorous approach. Yeah, and looks like they do a two-sided T interval. And there is the formula, so you can see the formula. A confidence interval, let's read this. A confidence interval with confidence level one minus alpha for a population mean mu based upon a sample of n continuous data observations with the sample mean x bar and a sample standard deviation s is, and then here we go, so mu is in this interval. This is known as a two-sided t interval or variance unknown confidence. So it's, uh, you, know, you have a confidence level there. So if alpha is 5%, it would be uh, a 95% uh, confidence interval. Or like, so alpha, if alpha was 0 0.05, let's say. All right, so pretty cool. And here they give you uh, the length of the, of the confidence interval. Cool. Yeah, this is really cool stuff. You can use this uh, you know, in the real world, right? In the real world, um, you can use statistics, which is kind of cool. It's one of the nice things about stats. I mean, you can apply it to things. Um, effect of confidence level on confidence interval length. Let's take a look at this, see what this says. The length of a confidence interval depends upon the confidence level one minus alpha through the critical point. As the confidence level increases, the length of the confidence interval also increases. Yeah. Interesting. Good stuff. You get some examples here. So they show you how to do it by hand, which is pretty cool. And then you have exercises and there's tables you use, you know, you use a table to do this. Um, you're going to get some of the values for your confidence interval from a table, which is in this book. Um, and so that's how you can 
do the exercises. It's really not hard. It's fairly computational, actually. Um, and the fact that you can check your answers for uh, the odd-numbered problems. What's this? Oh, wow. Look at this. It comes with a floppy drive. Wow. Wow. Notice to consumers this book cannot be returned for credit or refund. Oh. <gasps> if the perforation of the vinyl disc holder is broken or tampered with. Wow. Wow, this is really cool. Look at this. This is old school. This book actually comes with a floppy disk. How cool is this, right? Let's check this out. Look at this. This is a floppy disk. All right, this is it. I might be able to get my money back. Really old school. Copyright 1996. Old school, right? Uh, this is like a piece of history. I know it's just a silly floppy disk, and uh, you know it was a thing that was common back in the past, but no one no one uses these anymore. So it's kind of fun to see it uh, in a book here. Let's just put that back in there. Yep, pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. So you can use this to uh, learn uh, a lot of statistics. It also has other things. Um, you know, it has some probability. Here's the uniform distribution. The Weibull. Let's go to distributions related to the normal distribution. We've got the F distribution. Let's take a look at some of the stuff on random variables. So let's look at, so we've got discrete. Uh, let's look at page 125. Let's take a look at that. See what we got there. So 125, jointly distributed random variables. Here we go. I wanted to show you some calculus. So, so here um, you have the joint distributions. The joint cumulative uh, distribution function is defined this way here. And then here it is for continuous. Let me just zoom in so you can see it. So it's that, that expression there, that iterated integral. You have two improper integrals, basically. Which is pretty cool, right? And you're using that for probability, right? So it's representing probability. Things here, um, the marginal probability distributions. The marginal distribution of a random variable x is obtained from the joint probability distribution of two random variables x and y by summing or integrating over the values of the random variable y. The marginal distribution is the individual probability distribution of the random variable x considered alone. Yeah. And they have examples here and stuff. So, and again, you have exercises and then you have uh, answers in the back um, to the exercises. Let's just double check. So you see, you do have answers. Now they don't have a ton of exercises in each subsection, there's not that many. So you don't get tons of problems, but you do get a lot of topics uh, in this book. So you can learn uh, quite a bit of mathematics. I think if you don't have a book on mathematical statistics, you should have one, and, and I think this is a pretty good choice. I will um, try to remember to leave a link in the description uh, to this book if I can find it, uh, in case you want to check it out. So it's a solid book uh, on mathematical statistics. It's got um, you know everything you need for that. I personally took multiple courses, actually, a lot on um, statistical theory. I took I took a course two, two semesters. Uh, of a course with a book like this, and then I actually took uh, some more courses on stats. In any case, um, yeah, this is a solid one. It's a solid book. Biggest con probably is lack of exercises, but there are, I mean, there are some, right? You get eight exercises here, for example, right? And then you can check your answers in the back of the book um, to some of those. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's got examples and you can use it to learn. So yeah, just wanted to make you aware of it. By the way, if you want to learn math, before I forget, um, I actually do have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, uh, but if you get them, please use the links from my website. Uh, two reasons, one, it helps me. Two, I've lowered the price on all the courses to the bare minimum, so I'm pretty sure when you use my links, pretty sure you'll get a low price. So mathsorcerer.com. Um, check it out. Yeah, and we've got courses on calculus, uh, algebra. I do have a stats course there, but the course uh, uses software, which is not free. So, I mean, you can buy the course and still learn a lot, uh, but there's when the software stuff comes up, um, you have to own the software to follow the course. So it's kind of a, a little bit annoying, but um, I, I think it's pretty cheap. So in any case, uh, I do have a stats course. 
Um, and I have a lot of calculus courses. Those are better. Uh, differential equations, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, et cetera. Yeah, awesome. Uh, if you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. Biggest takeaways you took away from this video is that uh, this is a really cool subject uh, that you can learn, probability and statistics, using a book like this uh, or other books. And it, it's tough. It's, it's considered very difficult. Just so you know, it's not considered easy. Um, so yeah, probability and statistics for engineers and scientists. Good luck.